Okay, because they were disobeying the king's edict. All right. This was a horrible time for the Israelites. Horrible. They were slaves. Um, they, all these baby boys were being killed because they, were, they, they decided they were multiplying too fast. There's too many of them. All these aliens on our land, because they were down in Egypt. They were definitely aliens down there. Um, why would this family risk hiding Moses? Well, because they saw themselves as aliens on this earth. Okay? They had the faith of aliens. Verse 24, By faith Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He chose to be mistreated along with the people of God rather than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a short time. He regarded disgrace for the sake of Christ as of greater value than the treasures of Egypt because he was looking forward, looking ahead to his reward. So, Moses was not a resident of Egypt. He claimed his birth. He did not become part of Pharaoh's household. He knew he was an alien. He was raised in Pharaoh's court. Okay. So they taught him how to read. He probably knew many languages. He learned the skills that he needed to learn as a leader when he led the nation. Okay. But, you know, you're leading, you know, you think, wow, I was saved by God for a purpose. I know all this stuff. I'm so smart. That's great. And then God sent him out to the desert for 40 years because he was too arrogant. No, I don't know. I don't know that for sure. <laughs> but it was part of his training. It was part of the pieces of his life was to endure trial. All right. So he had the faith of the aliens. Now, when Moses, oh, by faith, I'm sorry, verse 27, by faith he left Egypt, not fearing the king's anger. He persevered because he saw him who was invisible. By faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood so that the destroyer of the firstborn would not touch the firstborn of Israel. So Moses persevered. The people became free. They packed up. And once again, they didn't know where they were going. Yay! <laughs> You know, at such point, don't you think Moses was saying, could you please give me a 10-year plan? How many of us ask God for that? I have. Sometimes God does give us 10-year plans. He gave John Wesley a 50-year plan. This was a 50-year plan of how we're going to reach all of England, all of the surrounding area for Christ. He had a plan. He implemented it. He's my hero. Yay for John Wesley because he had a plan. Bad marriage, good plan. <laughs> good plan. That was a bad plan for him to have that, that marriage. But um, Moses didn't have a 10-year plan. All he knew was what God said. Okay, this night, this is what's going to happen. This is what you need to do so that your firstborn doesn't get killed. And so that night, when all the firstborns were being killed all around them, they heard the wailing. They heard the screams. They heard those things. I mean, these were slaves. Israelites were slaves, so they probably worked in the houses of the Egyptians. And my guess is they didn't hate every Egyptian's guts because they're people, and you learn to get along with people who you work for and that kind of stuff. And their firstborns were being killed, maybe people they had raised, you know, if they were a nurse person or whatever, and they had raised these kids. And, you know, maybe that firstborn died. All the firstborn animals died. All that died. It was gruesome and yucky. It was enough for the people to be so scared that they'd do anything for God. <laughs> like, we're out of here. Yes, we are. Let's pack up everything and leave right now. And they didn't get over it. They didn't calm down until a little bit later, and then they started to complain. All right. But they had alien faith. That was necessary to go through that. Verse 29, by faith, the people passed through the Red Sea as on dry ground. But when the Egyptians tried to get, do so, they were drowned. Yay! They made it across the Red Sea. But then wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. When they got to the Red Sea, they're standing there, and it's the Red Sea's right there. And the Egyptians are behind them, the armies, and they're coming up behind them. And there's a sea here, and they have nowhere to go. They are absolutely trapped, and they're about to die. Sometimes it looks worse right before the God's miracle happens. And we're standing there, and you've got to have faith in that moment. The faith part came in the standing at the Red Sea when it wasn't parted. When you see God's hand move, when you see how gracious God is to save you or to do what you need to do, uh, then that kind of faith isn't necessary. It's, yay, God, you're doing it. Woo! And you walk across on dry ground, then they turn around and watch everybody else get killed. Yay, PTSD! Woo! I think I would have. I mean, you know, watch all those people get killed. Oh. Um, I know it was a different time, a different society, but I still. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, verse, uh, let's see, verse 32. What more shall I say? I do not have time to tell about. And then it goes through a whole list of those who went through some kind of trial and struggle. These are strugglers. These are people going through difficulties and trials. The non-strugglers did not make the list. <laughs> There's no non-strugglers in this list. Verse 33 says they were, they were thrown into the lion's den. Woo! We love that story. We tell our kids that. Look at that. You know, Daniel's standing the lion. There's big lions, you know, big teeth, you know, sharp. That's the moment he needed faith. Not after their mouths were shut and he sees angels shutting their mouths or whatever and they didn't touch him and he gets out of the pit. That's not the faith time. <laughs> That's the woo-hoo time and dancing time. But in the middle of it, when you're in that middle of that trial and that struggle, it is hard. These people persevered because they were looking forward to a land not their own. They knew they were aliens. They knew they were aliens here. And we are aliens too. Uh, verse 33, for 35, I mean. Verse 35, women received back their dead, raised to life. Others were tortured and refused to be released so they might gain a better resurrection. Some faced jeers and flogging while others were chained and put in prison. They were stoned. They were sawed in two. They were put to death by the sword. They went around in sheepskin and goatskin. They were destitute, persecuted, mistreated. Yay, I want to be part of Hebrews chapter 11. Woo! That's a great chapter to be a part because that's our heroes of the faith. Woo! They were sawed in two. Saw me, baby. Saw me. You know what I'm saying? It's the prophet Isaiah... It is said in history, got sawed in two. That's how he died, right? So I put that in there. Now, martyrs, if you're a martyr, according to Revelation, you get a front row seat in heaven. <laughs> you are under the throne, and you get to stay close to the heavenly throne the whole time. So in a way, they're looking for a better resurrection. <laughs> they had a better resurrection, you know, a little sawing, a little throne room, you know. Oh, the world was not worthy of them in verse 38. They wandered in deserts and mountains and caves and holes in the ground. They were all commended for their faith, yet none of them received what had been promised because they were part of a chain of events. They didn't see the end. They were part of it. They were part of the promise coming to pass. Faith is not seeing the answer, living in the midst of struggle and pain and difficulty and yet believing that God is there, that God is still for me in the middle of this trial, that God is on my side, that nothing can separate me from the love of God, that God is bigger, okay? And not, it's, it's not the world's plan for me, it's God's plan for me. He sees it all. He sees the big picture and we don't. God's plan might not make sense. It might not give us a, a life of ease and luxury and box seats, but, uh, or even an easy death. Um, but in the middle of that, God is present. His peace can be with us in the middle of the storm. It can be there. That's where faith. Faith is not seen and not getting what we expect. Verse 40, God plans something better for us so that only together with us would they be made perfect. They with us equals God's promise. Okay? So God's looking at the long range here. This is a historical thing. It's all of us are part of God's plan. We're all part of it. Our life is not just for now and here. It affects future generations. What we do affects future generations. If you stand in faith, if you are that alien who has their vision on heaven, you will affect future generations which is actually kind of exciting because we're like, oh, will anybody remember us after we die? Our footprint should still be here. The things that we have done, the people that we've talked to, the people that we have loved, the Christ that we are of showing people God's love, of bringing people into the kingdom, that should have big ramifications. One soul that's saved, that might bring a whole group of people into the kingdom and then that group, and it's like a ripple effect that goes out. From the, one church that's planted might affect thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people in the future. 
I mean, we don't know. But that's where we stand in faith. We stand in faith because God has told us to do it. And even though it's difficult and even though it's a trial, I'm going to stand. I'm going to have faith like an alien. <laughs> this is funny. The alien thing. I, my daughter had, she had this blow up alien doll for about a week or so <laughs> before I told her to get rid of it. And um, it was a friend of hers, and I thought, oh, I should have gotten that and brought that and had it stand up, you know, in the middle of this little green guy. But yeah, Becky said no. <clears throat> that wouldn't have been a good idea. 